Amen. Praise the Lord. I want to welcome you to our Friday Bible study. We pray as always the Lord has been good to you. Uh, we've been reading on the news uh, regarding some snowstorms that have been happening in the west and now they're headed toward the east. Uh, we're praying because we know that these, these storms are cut off power and uh, they cause a lot of severe problems, accidents, and uh, we're praying that God will work things out and help you to have peace of mind. And this is just something else on top of everything else in which you are facing with the economy, with the loss of jobs, with the uh, foreclosures, with the high prices. Uh, the list goes on and on and on. But in spite of all that, God Almighty is still in control. And we're believing the Lord that he is going to move and he continued to move because we, we're praying and we're believing the Lord to, to open doors and to move mountains. I, I don't believe there's anything that God cannot do and that is except fail. And so despite all of the problems and headaches and worries and difficulties uh, that, is, that is occurring in this world, the Lord Almighty said he would give us strength and he would give us peace and he is true to his word. He said, I am not a man that I should lie, neither the son of man that I should repent. He said, have I not said it, shall I not do it? So God is bigger than Wall Street, bigger than exchange, New York Stock Exchange. He's bigger than our, our economy. He's bigger than our legislative branch. He's bigger than our judicial branch. Uh, the Lord Jesus Christ is God Almighty. God Almighty all by him, himself. Praise the Lord. And we're going to continue the book of Zechariah, chapter 10, the sixth verse. Before we get off into that, we're going to open in prayer. We're going to ask the Lord to bless us this night that he will shower us with uh, the presence of the Holy Spirit and that we may be able to properly exegese or interpret or do a study of this great chapter. Heavenly Father, we're just honored and thankful that we once again can come in your presence and lift the name of Jesus Christ. We ask that you will bless us, O oh Father, as we have assembled ourselves to hear what thus saith the Lord. We pray that the teacher, the Holy Spirit, will help us, will guide us, will direct us, will open up the truth of the Word of God. Father, bless us mightily. Bless us, O oh Lord, in our baskets, in our storehouses. Bless us in our coming in, our going out. We pray, Father, that your richest blessing be upon us, and we'll believe in you, God, to turn things around, to turn things around in our life, to turn things around in your church, to turn things around in our economy, to turn things around in, in Washington, to turn things around. We'll believe in you to do it in the name of Jesus. And Father, we praise you. We magnify your holy name, and Father, we just believe you for peace, please, peace in the name of Jesus. And those that were and are affected by these snowstorms, these blizzards, we pray, Father, that you will help them. Help them to quickly recover. Help them to have the power they need, electricity. Help them, Lord, in all they do. And Father, we pray that you will keep a loss of life at a minimum, if that. We ask, God, that you'll move in a great power in the name of Jesus Christ, we ask it. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Zechariah chapter 10, starting in verse, verse 6. And the heading of this is Joseph and Judah regathered. Praise the Lord. As always, I'll be reading the expositors, expositors notes. Praise the Lord. Uh, it says, And I will strengthen the house of Judah, and I will save the house of Joseph, and I will bring them again to place them. For I have mercy upon them, and they shall be as though I had not cast them off. For I am the Lord their God, and will hear them. Praise the Lord. Until they can get some ink and uh, ink for our cartridges for the printers in which we have our styles, I, I can't print anything out. So that's why you don't have the study, the study guy yet. They don't they don't carry our pr our print cartridges in the exchange. So we have to order those on online, which is really unfortunate. Uh, it just takes a little longer in order to. Uh, to be able to get back into business. So as no says, the introduction of Joseph in this verse and Ephraim in verse 7, for they both mean the same and refer to the northern kingdom of Israel, decide the futurity of this prophecy. For they had no existence as such in Zechariah's day, nor have they at the present. And when the Lord speaks, he's not necessarily speaking for now, but he's speaking for what will be. And when God says that there will be thus and so, it shall come to pass. The Lord is the only one that has omniscience. He's able to, he has all knowing. He knows things past, present, and, and future. And he said that Judah and, 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 and uh, Joseph and Judah shall co again come together at some future point in history. 
Continuing on, the first phrase of the verse refers to both the northern and southern kingdoms being once again joined and never again separated. This will take place in the upcoming kingdom age, the kingdom age. This is after the millennial reign. This is, of course, after the, the, the tribulation. Uh, and, and it's going to be peace unparalleled. It's going to be a time of great joy, a time of, of, of excitement, a time of, of, of closeness, a time of worship, a time of praise, no more sickness, no more sin, no more death, no more lying, no more dishonesty, no more man's hatred toward man. This is going to be a time of jubilation as the Lord has intended that it shall be. Praise the Lord. And I look forward to that day and that hour. Praise God. Verse 7, and they of Ephraim shall be like a mighty man, and their hearts shall rejoice as through wine. Yea, their children shall see it and be glad. Their hearts shall rejoice in the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, notice that this speaks of the time that Israel will accept Christ as Savior. Oh, bless the Lord. Lord and Messiah. It will be almost immediately after the second coming. Chapter 13 and verse 1. Verse 8, and I will hiss for them. And gather them, for I have redeemed them, and they shall increase as they have increased. Paul well, notice says the phrase, I will hiss for them and gather them, actually means that the Lord summons them. The phrase, and they shall increase as they have increased, refers to an ex explosive increase in population. Again, this will take place in the kingdom age. Praise the Lord. It's a beautiful time when the Lord calls for us. He calls us because he knows us by by name. He knows us individually and up close. God knows the very hairs that are on our head and he's concerned about us individually and he, and he wants us to be prepared for eternity, not just a temporal existence. We live our lives so many times, one day, one hour at a time, uh, never realizing that there's, there's much more to this life than just the here and now. The pleasures of today can easily be forgotten. But that which you invest your life in, the service of the Lord, the lifting of the name of Jesus Christ, will be shouted about and herald forever and forever. Praise the Lord. Verse 9. And I will sow them among the people, and they shall remember me in four countries, and they shall live with their children and turn again. The phrase, and I will sow them among the people, refers to Jews increasing among the nations of the world where they were to be scattered. This scattering took place, first of all, in the Babylonian Empire, and then some 500 years later by Rome. This one phrase, I will sow, proclaims the Lord's watchful eye over them all of these centuries. Even though they were out of covenant, the phrase, and they shall remember me as four countries, in four countries, means that they will attempt to maintain the Jewish way of worship wherever they may be. And the beauty of the Lord of serving the Lord is that wherever you go he is there his presence is there the word of God tells us that that uh, that the heavens themselves cannot contain the glory of the Lord and it also says that uh, the eyes of the Lord run to and fro the earth the Lord's presence is everywhere his spirit is moving David said though I make my bed in the hell thou art there O Lord and I thank God that that in spite of my bumblings and my fumblings, and, and many of you can empathize and identify with what I'm talking about, despite our failures and our flaws and, and the things that we've done that we know we should not have done, God still has stayed by our side. Some of you have been in a club, and the Lord Jesus Christ has walked in and talked to you and convicted your heart right in the midst of sucking on whatever you were sucking on in a club. And I thank God that he will invade Hallelujah. He will invade your territory and he will give you the message of hope. But it's again, it's up to us to grasp a hold of it or not. Praise the Lord. Continuing on the phrase, and they shall live with their children, simply means that despite all the efforts of Satan to exterminate these ancient people, the promise is given here that Satan will not be successful. Glory to God. The three words, and turn again, have to do with their ultimate return to the land of Israel, which, of course, began in 1948, Isaiah 35 and 10. Israel, as the Lord said, they will become a nation again. They became a nation again in 1948. 
and they were voted by the UN to 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 become a nation. Uh, the U.S. put in the deciding vote. You know, really, or sadly, I should say, Great Britain opposed Israel becoming a nation again. That's a, that's very very sad, but that was true. And 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 the U.S. has stood by Israel while other nations while other nations have dropped off. And the Lord told Abraham a long time ago, he said, I will bless them that bless you, and I will curse them that curse you. The blessing, the manifold blessing that the U.S. has experienced is because they have held to the hand of Israel. They have refused to let go of the hand of Israel, and God has blessed our nation, our country, tremendously. And now a lot of silly decisions.